days uh, we've been uh, working on this mobile home and uh, this particular mobile home uh, we found very low insulation levels and uh, in the belly for instance uh, that is the uh, floor system and we also found quite a bit of duct leakage uh, which we were then able to solve those duct leakage problems through blower door testing and pressure pan testing uh, diagnostics which enabled us to trace uh, where that duct leakage was and then uh, utilize a variety of techniques to seal it. He was just showing us different materials and, and basically what you need, you need a roll of flashing, um, you need some good UL approved foil tape, um, you need some mesh tape, but the, the key ingredient is that mastic because you can put all that other stuff in but that mastic just kind of solidifies everything and, and adheres it all together and when that mastic dries it stays flexible um, so you don't have to worry because a lot of times when we go look at mobile homes right from the factory that foil tape that they use to seal the ducts it's already um, you know it's failed it, it kind of shellacks and it falls off and by using mastic we know it's just it's there to stay and that's real important in these mobile homes to make sure that what we do is, is there to stay. The thing that impressed me most was when they fabricated the, the booth. You know, he made a little extension to extend down in there and then he wrapped it in the mastic. You know, that was that was pretty neat in order to seal it up, get a permanent seal on it, and he also rolled up the, the foil and blocked it off to keep the airflow from extending down to the other end. And then he also sealed that in mastic. I thought that was a pretty good idea. And it also reduced our CFMs by like, I don't know, I think 50 it was with just that little bit. Whatever technique you need to use to get the job done, you just want to make sure you have mastic, foil tape, mesh tape, and just flashing with you. That should just be a staple in your vehicle. What I really liked um, was seeing the duct pressure diagnostics with the duct pan. I think that's real beneficial and um, it'd be easy enough to make your own duct pan and start doing your own tests like that and I think that's what I'm going to do as a result of this training. Because before you would just do a blower test and you wouldn't know where. Well we'd walk and we'd feel the air coming through the ducts and we pretty much do mandatory duct sealing. Um, at the boots and stuff, but by doing that duct pan testing, we could seal the boots and it still tells us, you know what, before the end of that job, whether we got a, still got a problem maybe internally where we'll have to get into that belly and, and, and um, do some investigating. But that duct, it, it kind of showed us what area to start looking. Um, instead of going and just cutting holes anywhere under the trailer, you kind of, you got an idea where to start. And we insulated the belly uh, with fiberglass blown in insulation. And uh, the benefit there was that we reduced the uh, air leakage rate of the house by um, probably at least 20% uh, because of the air leakage uh, reduction that we were able to quantify with the uh, uh, blower door and diagnosis. So a, a hole is drilled under the uh, mobile home, uh, through the uh, panel under the mobile home, they call the belly. And uh, you push this up into the hole, the material comes up and it gets diverted by this and shoots around. So you just turn it like this around and you can go 360 degrees and fill the, uh, the cavity under the, under the home with insulation. You can see a cut area here uh -huh. that they would just push this up in there I see. and spin it around. And blow it, blow it full of insulation, okay. and then that's patched. Uh, we uh, attempted to access the wall cavity, which we did in certain locations on this home. Here we have a situation where we have uh, very low insulation levels, uh, about an inch of insulation, not even an R6. Uh, and what we'd hoped to do here was. Uh, pull back the siding and then re-insulate the wall using uh, bats of insulation, stuffing them up into the wall cavity. And in many mobile homes, that's a possibility. But in this case, you have two by two wall construction, and uh, which is vertical framing, and then you have uh, horizontal bracing that goes across or down horizontally. So uh, you can't utilize this, that technique in this case because of the obstruction created by the horizontal strapping. 
also there's really no practical way to re-insulate this cavity because it's already uh, too tight uh, or restrictive to be able to uh, to blow it with a, a tube fill with loose fill insulation so this is one we cannot do. We were able to demonstrate the sidewall application with the stuff it method where you take a, a blanket or a bat of insulation and use a stuffing tool and uh, move the insulation up into the existing cavity by taking apart the, or, or removing the screws from the lower sill of the metal siding and then uh, which allowed us enough space to be able to use the stuffing tool to install a bat. How much insulation is here? Not very much, about an inch. That. On the roof uh, we were able to uh, demonstrate a couple different methods for accessing the roof cavity. One uh, with the edge lift method where we uh, went along the edge here and removed uh, the gutter material and unfastened the edge of the roof lip uh, and raised the roof lip and then we re-insulated the roof cavity. It was a fairly shallow roof cavity, uh, but we're estimating that we got an additional uh, R11 to R19 in that attic space. With the flexible insulation tube and do a 360 with the insulation coverage. And that works in a lot of cases, but not in this case. You know why? Because the bowstring trusses have solid gussets all the way through. So there's no way we could only, we could only get uh, each cavity. That so the thing is to walk away, but you walk away from that method. Instructor Bills lets us know that you know there's a lot of different ways that mobile homes are built, and sometimes you got a little creative to get the stuff in there, but you'll figure it out. There's there's a way to do it. Uh, the other method, of course, is what? Lifting. Edge lift. But what I would like to draw your attention to, since they've already cut two holes, is how they're going to patch this. So if you can get up on the ladder or take a look at how they're doing that, that's really important because you don't want roof leaks. So basically the way they're going to do it, they cut the 12 by 12 opening and they had a had a flap, basically, of the roof, and they just left, like, hinged over. So they're going to take that, bend it back over, okay, and they're going to put an oversized piece of sheet metal on top of that, but they're going to back caulk it first before they put it down with high temp. Should be polyurethane. That's the best caulk to use, not high temp uh, silica. It should be polyurethane. So they lay that down, and then they zip screw it all the way around, you know, every few inches. And then... He's got a material called peel or ice and water shield, and that works fine too. Ice and water shield is fine for this. Peel and seal is another type you can consider using. So once that's down, uh, then we'll put the goop to it. Okay, the roof, uh, the, the roof coating, uh, white uh, elastomeric. See the flashlight? Yeah, you just take the sun and you reflect it in there off your watch. And it's about the most powerful flashlight you can get. You could rapidly fill up the bathroom with uh, fiberglass insulation if you don't seal that off. Yeah, how did you know to look for that? Well, because I've been burned in the past. I was going to say you probably It's seal them tight and then ventilate right is the new uh, mode or the new paradigm, yep. the new philosophy. So, 7.5 you know, CFM per person, and in order to get that, we have to ventilate. Fiberglass there, right through here, um, bar, that shows the air is an indication that it's yeah. acting like an air filter, and it's filtering out dirt. So dirt means that there's a lot of infiltration going on in that wall cavity, which is inherent uh, to uh, mobile home walls because they're ventilated. They're literally vented, ventilated. If we put this, here. If we put this back down a minute, see how this is ridged here. This is intentional so that when condensation occurs on the inside of these, uh, these panels, the water will run out. Okay, so it is intentionally ventilated, <laughs> which is uh, an inherent energy problem for these guys. Well, most people have never even heard of weatherization. And, and the stimulus program really brought an awareness not only to weatherization, 
Um, but these people that are being weatherized, they all attend energy education classes and stuff, and, and they learn how to adjust their lifestyles and stuff, too. It's not just a one-time um, savings. I mean, you're going to save for the entire time that home is being occupied. <laughs>